Good afternoon, today is May 28th, and today I'll continue to be talking about the coronavirus. So the first piece of news that I like to talk about is virus transmission on surfaces. So many Americans, including me, are very worried about uh, coming in contact with surfaces that other people have touched. For example, doorknobs, tabletops, shopping bags, and more. And oftentimes, uh, these situations can be very confusing as you don't know whether you have the virus or not. So today I'll talk about if the virus really does transmit on surfaces. So uh, the first early scientific, scientific advice seemed to say that uh, people should treat surface contact with utmost seriousness and there were studies that show the virus stays on surfaces for up to two days and the main and however recent research has suggested the opposite and that few people will get the virus this way. Uh, the main transmission mechanism instead appears to be close contact with someone who has the virus like talking face to face or sitting nearby in a indoor situation and these type of situations will expose people enough uh, to the virus uh so right now i think that uh, one thing to understand is that merely touching virus particles isn't enough to become infected and you have to touch many particles then touch your face to become infected objects that a small number of people briefly touch, like groceries and groceries and shopping bags, seem to present a very small risk. And uh, in spectrum of risk, you should worry about more about face-to-face -face conversations and extended time and in indoor spaces with people who are outside your your households. So, for example, uh, if you like touch an elevator button, it may be okay. Uh, however, another thing to note is that while it doesn't seem to be common, it does seem to be possible, and it is likely the explanation of an outbreak at a Chinese shopping mall. So I think my advice right now would just be uh, be careful of uh, things that people have touched for a long time, but uh, if there's just like small things, I think you shouldn't worry too much about it. The second thing that I'd like to talk about is that Walt Disney World in Orlando is planning to reopen in mid-July. However, there are necessary safety protocols limiting the number of visitors, making face masks mandatory, deploying, deploying Roman, Roman squads to enforce social distancing, and uh, no longer allowing people to get up and close and personal I don't, with Mickey Mouse are just some uh, restrictions that have been enforced. So the Disney World, Walt Disney World consists of six separately ticketed parks with combined annual attendance of 93 million and the two most popular ones, the Magic Kingdom and the Animal Kingdom, will reopen on July 11th, while the other major parks will op reopen on July 15th, and most likely it will be limited capacity around half of, of what it was when it was pre-pandemic. So right now, I think this just poses as a large symbol that uh, tourism is edging towards the normal, because obviously we know that the uh, Tourism took a large hit during this coronavirus pandemic because obviously people can't travel and I think Walt Disney opening is just it, it's already had some lessons learned from the opening of the Shanghai Disney, Disney World and I think it will it's certainly a symbol of the entire tourism sector and how they will be gradually edging toward the normal and start to reopen as well. The third and final thing that I like to talk about is um, actually quite interesting. So in in Australia, Farvarden Deliri has built a 15 foot tall replica of a bird known as a laughing kookaburra. So uh, he uh, invited on his work this week by towering the kookaburra around his block and he took a, a video on Twitter and it has 
uh, gone viral. So he, mainly, uh, Mr. Daliri said that he just wanted to cheer up people in these gloomy times, and the bird is known to uh, laugh frequently. And he also said that this is a time we need to reach out to each other. So personally, I think this his project was um uh, it was it was extremely creative and awesome. And also, I think if really. It uh, really shows how some people are uh, wishing the best for others and uh, coping together through this pandemic where, where many are depressed and lonely. And, and I think this really brings a bright, bright spot into the world. That's it. Thank you for listening and I hope you have a good day. Thank you.